Rev up your engine! Damon Bryan says, should transmission fluid be changed on high mileage vehicles? It's a very good question. Two things, the vehicle and what's been done in the past. If you take Toyota's, Honda's, a lot of Japanese vehicles, they don't really shed much material. So even high mileage ones, you can often change the fluid and it won't do any damage. But you take like older style American automatic transmissions, they shed a lot of clutch material. Automatic clutches and automatic transmissions, the old style ones, and they'll shed material. If say you got 150,000 miles on a Ford or a Chevy, and then you change the fluid, sometimes they'll slip after you changer or they won't even go at all those I don't advise doing but if you know the history of the car it's an old American car and you change it every 40 50,000 miles continue doing it it's often a gamble if it's real dirty and it shifts okay leave it alone but if you got when it slips like mad what the heck it's already damaged maybe it'll help it a little bit and in a case like that if you do change it put in some Lucas automatic transmission slip fix and that can make them slip less it can help it a little bit you got to take all those things into consideration the best thing to do is to change it regularly in your own vehicle maybe every 40 50,000 miles and then you know it's done right it doesn't cost much if you do it yourself guys rip you off a garage you know two three four hundred dollars just find out how to change it yourself easily do it yourself I got videos on that Falcon who says Scotty I'm looking to buy a 2011 Toyota RAV4 106,000 miles manual diesel is there anything to look out when buying a model thanks well as any car you want to make sure that it hasn't been wrecked flooded stolen look at the title make sure it's a clean title 106,000 miles is nothing for a diesel Toyota those things can run virtually forever the main thing is you want a mechanic to always check out a used car and on that have them check the electronics on the diesel because it's all electronics but also have them check the automatic transmission because the automatic transmission is the weakest link in that and you want to make sure it's still working good and of course use common sense like I do don't just keep looking at vehicles send them to a mechanic road test them yourself watch my video how to quickly check out a used car do that yourself so the real clunkers you throw away and you don't pay a mechanic a hundred bucks to check it out you go look at an next one, but when you kind of like one it rides okay then take it to a mechanic Michael Jones says should you use genuine Honda power steering fluid in Honda vehicles I would because Honda's have very particular power steering the thing about it is there's a bunch of companies out there that actually sell the same stuff it'll say power steering fluid for Honda's AutoZone sells it you can buy it there realize Honda is a car company they do not make Honda power steering fluid somebody else makes it for them and then they put the Honda label on it just like Harley Davidson doesn't make oil but the Harley Davidson oil they sell for God knows what 10, 12, 15 dollars a quart at the dealer is made by a company that then puts Harley Davidson. So as long as it says for Honda's power steering, you can use it. But don't use other kinds because they're very particular in Hondas. They've got very sensitive power steering systems and they're so expensive if your rack goes out, you want to keep them clean. And since they're Hondas, my advice would be I'd say every 40, 50,000 miles, just drain some out, fill it up again. I've got a thing on changing power steering fluid using a turkey baster and get most of it out and doing it four or five times do that instinct says hello Scotty what do you suggest a Miata or a Honda S2000 how much money do you want to spend and what do you want to drive the Miatas are great two-seaters they're fun to drive around they can last forever a Honda S2000 is a miniature race car and the values of those things are going up now the one advantage is if you buy one and get a good price on one they got to buy a used one they don't make them anymore it'll probably appreciate in value if you take care of it it is a full-blown zoom around racy car Honda was never that much on making sports cars so they decided they weren't going to make them didn't sell enough didn't make enough money they make a ton selling Civics and Accords and stuff and SUVs so it was a business decision that is a collector's item if you find a good one and you're a serious driver you'd like that but if you want to piddle around and have fun with a top down get the Miata they're relatively different vehicles decide which one you want to get they're both good choices but let's say you don't mess with cars get the Miata because you want to learn a little bit of cars if you got S2000 or you're going to be paying mechanics like give me money to work on it because they are racing cars and they you know are going to need more upkeep than a Miata is Audi Belt says what would you recommend from an Audi I would recommend that your neighbor buys it not you and you could borrow it when you want it as far as I'm concerned they're generally endless money pits as they age they have all kinds of problems they're expensive to maintain I mean they're beautiful looking cars and they ride fine great you know they don't hold up over time and check out their insane low resale value now I've had customers think oh wow look I got this 
this used one cheap. Yeah, it was cheap to buy, and then it cost him a fortune to fix. I had a customer back in Houston. He was my next door neighbor. He was a corporate lawyer, made six figures. He got rid of his Audi because he said it was costing him too much money to fix it. And the stupid thing only had 40,000 miles, and the transmission had already blown up on it. That's what I think about Audis. I would not buy one. If you really positively got to get an Audi, lease one. Get it out of your system. Then if it breaks, it's Audi's problem, not yours. And you'll find out that if you lease one, you will lose less money paying for the lease than you would if you bought the car and then sold it a few years later. You'd lose a lot less money because the reseller value was... <laughs> Hello, Scotty. My car loses coolant after a water pump and thermostat change. We pressure tested. Everything's dry. Where's the water going? Well, it's got to be going somewhere unless you have some kind of an evil neighbor who's sucking it out. Do change the radiator cap. Not holding pressure. It will evaporate out. Could do that. But there's a lot of reasons you can lose coolant. Do my video. How to fix an overheating car engine. Do all those tests. Pray it's not the last one. The last one is a blowing head gasket. If your head gasket's starting to blow, you will burn coolant. It's an easy test. You can get the tester at Amazon on sale for about 30 bucks. Put a little blue liquid in the tube, and if it turns yellow, it means your head gasket's blowing. Then you decide, are you going to try some sealer? Are you going to fix the engine, or are you going to ditch the car? Dan Kelf says, hey, Scotty, what should I do if I'm getting a change brake fluid emergency signal, even though I'm full on brake fluid? That's a rarity. Most cars don't have that. There's a few out there that after a certain period of time, they say change the brake fluid because they tell you you're supposed to change it after a certain amount of time. Now, if you keep your cars forever, it's a good idea to flush the brake fluid out every five or six years or so. If you get rid of cars before they have 200,000 miles on them, you're just throwing your money away because it really it doesn't really need to be done in most cases, unless you got a junker. You buy an old junker, go ahead and do it. You don't know what shape it's in. Take a good car like a Toyota. Their brake systems are pretty well sealed. I've seen them with 250,000. The brake fluid's never been touched. And they never had a problem. But on the other hand, I've seen Chryslers that, you know, were five years old and the brake system started to go because their systems aren't sealed as well. Air gets in and brake fluid is what's called hygroscopic. It absorbs water vapor. The water vapor then gets inside and ruins your brake system, especially the ABS system. So you got a junky car like a Chrysler, probably flush it out every four or five years. Got something like a Toyota, eh, you don't really have to worry about it all that much, but if you want to, you could flush it out every five or six years yourself by opening the bleeder valve on each wheel, pushing it out until the black goo comes out and suck the crud out of the master cylinder with a turkey baster and pour some new fluid in. There's a lot of stuff you can do yourself. Nando 420 says, Scotty, my heated air conditioning seats in my 2000 Lincoln MKZ stopped working. What would be the first thing to check? Of course, check the fuse. Also check the relay. Pray it's one of those because those are very complex systems and they're just coils, heating coils, cooling coils built inside the seat. And from my experience, a lot of times the coils burn out and you're going to live without it when you find out how much money it would cost to replace them because of course it's built inside the seat you got to take the seat apart then you have to reupholster it it could get expensive it's another one of those kind of gimmicky things that if it's not the fuse or the relay that's gone bad my advice live without it unless you want to spend a small fortune getting heater seats to work i mean as long as your ac and heat works in a car you don't want to spend a bunch of money fixing something like that you might get lucky maybe it's a blown fuse maybe it's a bad relay check that first belly g says how can i stop smoking in my car all right well maybe get a nicotine patch and put it on your car and hope that it's not addicted to smoking. All right, now smoke can come from various things. Burning coolant will make white smoke steam. Burning oil can also make it a little bit white. Black smoke means it's running too rich. You got to figure out what it is. And of course, as it gets colder, which it is now because we're coming up on winter, cars just smoke anyways because hot exhaust and it's cold outside. So you live in Chicago in the winter, they're all going to smoke. And even down south, when you first start them out, when it's cooler, they'll smoke a little while, but then when it warms up, they stop smoking. You may think, Scotty, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't the car get hotter as it goes and not cooler? Why would it stop smoking? Well, the reason it stops smoking is because part of the smoke is heat and the water vapor in your exhaust system. And once you warm it up, the water vapors burn off so it won't smoke as much here down south when it's not that cold outside. But up north, when it's cold, cold, they're going to smoke all the time because it's so cold. <laughs> and the difference between the hot exhaust and the cold, it's always going to smoke. Himesh Garg says, I'm going to dampen my car for sound. I don't want it glued to the door because I thought it would increase time for future maintenance. Will it work? I have a thick yoga mat. Can I use it as a damper? We can use whatever you want, but the problem is a damper's got to stay where it is and absorb sound. 
down. If it's just sitting there, it's going to move around. The best way to do it is with professional insulation. There's a zillion companies out there that make the stuff. You take the things apart, you put the dampening where you want, and of course, the big dampening is the doors, because the sounds, especially on a highway, come from the sides. Also, under the seats and under the mats, which aren't that hard to take out. Most seats have four bolts, you take them out, and you can put any kind of dampening material you want. They're not all that expensive. The main thing is the labor of taking everything apart and putting it in. Guys that are pros that really want a quiet car, they'll spend 10, 12 hours working on a car. To me, hey, I'll just turn the radio up. It's a simpler solution. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.